The Battle of Taylorburg in 1242 marked the end of Henry III of England's desire to restore the Angevin Empire, which at its height of power encompassed England, large amount of territories in France, parts of Wales and Ireland. But the battle itself was part of a more significant conflict called the Santonge War. The war started as a dispute over the title of Count of Poitou, as some French barons argued that the title should have been granted to Richard, Earl of Cornwall, King Henry's brother, as the territory had traditionally been held by a Plantagenet, but the French King, Louis IX, granted the title to his brother. This action triggered the revolt, as the counties of France, predominantly Aquitaine, had for a long time been autonomous. The growing French royal power was becoming a threat to that. This video is part of a massive collaboration between several history channels called Project France. To watch more videos on French history, check out the playlist in the description tab. For many years, the Kingdom of England and France had been bitter rivals, ever since Duke William of Normandy conquered England from the Anglo-Saxons. After King Henry II inherited the county of Anjou and Normandy, the power of the Anglo-Norman kings rivaled that of the French king. However, under Philip II of France, the English king, John Lackland, lost nearly all the French land his father had gained, ending the Angevin Empire. King John's successor, King Henry III, was an ambitious man and a dreamer, as during his long 56 year reign, most of his military campaigns always ended in disaster, costing the crown vast sums of money and angering his lords and barons. Judging Henry from a purely military standpoint, he was a poor king in that regard. However, his piety was well known and during the later parts of his reign, he rebuilt parts of Westminster Abbey. The French King Louis IX is the only canonised King of France, as his piety was known throughout Europe. King Louis's popularity lasted his entire reign and earned him a high reputation as he was often asked to arbitrate in many political matters. His administration prowess in dealing with issues regarding French law led to a golden age for France. Before the war started, King Louis tried to settle the issue of his choice of count with diplomacy, but as King Louis arrived in Poitiers, he received the news that Hugh, Count of Le Marche, had deployed an army only a few miles away. Despite this blatant attempt at intimidation, King Louis still went ahead with the meeting and met with Hugh and his wife Isabella, yet the talks yielded nothing and King Louis left. In December 1241, a homage ceremony was held for King Louis's brother, Alphonse, the new Count of Poitou. In attendance were many French nobles, including Hugh. There was much talk of political and economic matters, and when the time came for the nobles to pledge allegiance to the new Count, Hugh insulted him by openly refusing to swear loyalty. This public refusal was humiliating for Alphonse and King Louis. Hugh then stormed out. His one action triggered the war. Hugh was joined by another count who felt disrespected by King Louis's actions. Raymond of Toulouse had his lands taken away after the Albigensian Crusade, and seeing an opportunity to reclaim these lands, joined Hugh. But even with the combined force, their armies would pale in comparison to the increasingly centralised French Kingdom's power. Yet Hugh could rely upon the support of King Henry and the Earl of Cornwall. However, the arrival of that support would take time, whereas King Louis wasted no time in assembling an army and called on the help of the other French lords. By April 1242, King Louis's army was ready. It numbered 50,000 according to the sources, but Modern estimates range from 25 to 20,000, still that was two times bigger than what his grandfather fielded at the Battle of Bouvines. With his forces ready, King Louis wasted no time in capturing rebel strongholds. 
By May, King Henry and the Earl of Cornwall finally arrived in France and joined with Hugh's forces in the south of Poitou. This was not the first time King Henry had invaded France, as he tried earlier in his reign to restore his father's territory in 1230, yet his lacklustre and mediocre organisational skills left the campaign with little direction, and King Henry soon made peace with King Louis before returning to England. Before the two sides met, King Henry had been sending letters to King Louis informing him that he was only here to reclaim his birthright and protect his stepfather's rights. King Louis was unimpressed by these letters, no compromise could be arranged, only conflict would end this dispute. By July 1242, both armies were near the village of Taylorburg, the river Charente was separating the two sides. The French king had stationed himself at the Chateau de Taylorburg, a now ruined castle. There was only one bridge that could be used as a crossing and King Louis positioned his army overlooking the bridge. In contrast, King Henry had joined with Hugh. Both armies had similar numbers, around 20 to 25,000 and the same types of troops, heavy infantry, men-at-arms and knights. Once the army was in position, King Henry ordered an assault on the French. The English advanced and attacked, but due to the tight conditions, the English made little progress in their offensive. King Louis then signals his entire army to sally forth. They charge straight at the English. The thunderous gallop of the French heavy cavalry then crashed into the English. The charge was enough to cause panic in the English ranks, and they soon broke off. The panic caused Henry III and his brother to flee the field of battle and head to the city of Sainz, where they tried to fortify their position against King Louis, but the French continuously harassed the retreating English to Sainz, where a pitched battle was fought north of the city. Still. The battered morale and the lack of leadership from King Henry meant that defeat was inevitable, as King Henry soon fled the city, retreating to Gascony and then sailing back to England. Without the English leadership, King Louis besieged the city, which surrendered after two days. Hugh, openly weeping, begged the king for forgiveness on his hands and knees. Hugh lost his castles, and his daughter was married to one of his enemies. As for King Henry, he tried to use the English navy to blockade the port city of La Rochelle, but again, this was poorly prepared and didn't stop the French from taking over the rest of Gascony. With his French territories now entirely occupied, King Henry wrote to the Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick II, explaining he would never again try to take back his former lands, and requested an alliance with the Emperor as the growing power of France would concern the Emperor. King Henry then also wrote to King Louis, seeking a five-year truce, before ratifying a treaty in the year 1259 called the Treaty of Paris that should have ended the rivalry between the Calpatian and Plantagenet dynasty. But the settlement may have caused more issues, as England and France would fight each other again over the years, which would lead to the longest war in the history of Europe, the Hundred Years' War. <laughs>